This was a thrift store pickup, as is broken, uh, really nice uh, Yamaha YPG535 full-scale digital keyboard with 500 different tunes and USB and flash media capabilities and everything else. So I got it and powered it up, and it suffers that same sort of issue that quite a few different Yamaha higher-end keyboards suffer from where half the LCD screen cuts out. And it's actually a pretty simple fix, so I thought I'd document some of the process here as I go along. This problem is usually caused by a sort of dry solder connection between the ribbon cable and the PCB. Uh, seems to be just a common issue with these. So the first step is to unscrew everything. Uh, there are two backboards on this one that each had 10 screws in them. Underneath those, you've got like uh, two internal screws in each side. Then you've got uh, 20 other screws around the sides and um, probably eight screws in the middle. So there's a lot of screws to take off. But once you get it done, then the um, back will slide out. Once all of the screws have been taken out, you can just sort of lift it up and gently pull apart the, the two sections. Got to be careful because there are connections on each side and some of these are taped up so you can actually get a little more leeway by untaping some of this uh, but this right here is the main um, underneath this board here is where the lcd panel is and there's two ribbon connections going in there so you can see now i'm actually just applying pressure on the ribbon cable and you can see with enough pressure the screen comes right back but if you let go then it just doesn't make a great connection there. So easy fix, we just have to reheat and reflow some of that solder on there. So while we could actually probably work on this LCD screen just internally without taking anything apart, uh, I prefer to have it on a workbench with the hot air gun and stuff like that. So I have marked the matching corners of each one of these ribbon cables just to ensure no ambiguity when I replace them and then nothing gets put backwards then just making sure it's unplugged here uh, we will just pull out carefully disconnect each of these top level ribbon cables to then get to that LCD screen and some of these there is tape uh, over some of these so you got to be careful a little bit but you'll pull them out and then we can go from there and with all of the ribbon cables disconnected, there are four additional screws, one of which also holds the ground um, cable, so be careful of that. Then you should be able to just take these four screws out and this top piece will separate. And just to make it a little easier to work at while removing this, I have unplugged what I believe is a speaker cable uh, from there. And with that unplugged and then this one, we can just separate both parts simply like that so that we can continue unscrewing these four screws. And then with all four of these screws unscrewed, the PCB just lifts right off. And then underneath that is where we actually have our LCD screen. Now these, they do sell new online, but they're like 60 to 100 bucks or more and not necessary. It's, it's just a simple uh, solder contact issue here. So what I'm going to do now is it looks like there are four more screws to actually remove uh, this, this, this overall thing. So I'm just going to remove the whole thing here. And again, um, to actually finally pull out the LCD screen, which in this case is truly probably unnecessary. We're just going to be working on these ribbon cables here. But if you are doing a full replacement or just want it on a workbench, you do have this one other um, connection here. Now these two pins on the LCD board are actually soldered in. So if you replace it, you would have to re-solder these. Um, we can remove just this side. Now this is a slightly different pin connection uh, where you've got, and again, just for the sake of making sure they go back in right, I'm just going to mark one edge like that. Um, and then this one you actually have tabs that you lift up and then the wire will pull right out. And then with that, we have removed, uh, minus some tape here, we have removed the actual LCD circuit board. So now I can take it to the workbench and see what we can do. 
So then these are the two ribbon cables that are affected here. But as I'm going through this, I do notice there are a few sort of flaky looking um, soldering points um, on this cable too. So I might just reflow these and then use a hot air station, rework station to run through these. And I'll set the um, rework station to anywhere from like 150 to 180 uh, Celsius and with a fine tip on there so that we will just go little by little and then press that down. Um, I can work on that now, I guess. And then I will just apply pressure with any one of these sort of uh, plastic pressure items here. I'll just run back and forth. And then kind of smooth that out and just try and make that adhere a little better. like that. And we can do the same with the other one. So I'll just apply heat for 10 to 20 seconds in an area. And just slowly work my way down. Right where those two points contact. Then once that cools, that should re-adhere to the PCB and hopefully be good to go. And once again, I might just reflow some of these other ones slightly uh, with the soldering iron here. And before putting it completely back, I also like to just repress down uh, the adhesive where the ribbon cable actually goes underneath the LCD. Just like that. And now putting it back together is just the reverse of taking it out. And as you go along and get everything connected again, you can just try it and see if it's functional. And if not, you might have to return again and apply a little more heat for a little longer and press these down. But we'll see. There's one final test before screwing in all 70 or whatever screws that you need to. I have uh, just put a couple screws in after reconnecting the cables from the back and it's got nice 10 watt speakers it really sounds great as a keyboard here if you can get it for cheap and fix it up um and so now that i have it all plugged in i'm just gonna power it back on make sure that our lcd screen is still functioning and it appears to be let's focus in on that so that looks nice and good there and then i'm just gonna run through seems to be working really nice. So I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what we can do. It even came with a foot pedal and a DVD and the manual and everything. So kind of cool for composing even MIDI music or anything like this. So 
that's all. Now I just have to finish screwing it in.